A very good evening and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukuletu Tele. Numerous costs are associated with maintaining a car. Could see some delve into the option of leasing. Keith Watson, Managing Director of Arriva, joins me now for a look at the pros and cons of leasing a vehicle. Good to have you with us this evening, Keith. Hi, Let's uh, get into the, 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 the issue regarding both issues. Uh, buying or leasing a vehicle, you'll probably be biased towards the leasing <laughs> side because that's what your business of, does. Yeah, of course I would, but... but Buying and leasing is, is an option. Um, leasing doesn't fit everybody, neither does buying. So th I think it's two different products in, in the same market, but for two different applications. Let's get the buying side of it out of the way here. Obviously, affordability is the key issue here and the yeah. kind of vehicle that you want to purchase. Uh, the key nitty gritties for consumers to understand about that particular element, especially with the terminology regarding the uh, term of payment uh, back on the vehicle. Yeah, so if, you, if you're wanting to buy a vehicle and drive it for longer than the term of the contract, and you're gonna drive it for five, six, seven years, then buying it on installment sale and financing, it makes sense to you because you'll reduce your payments and you'll drive the car for a longer period, so you'll drive it for an unfinanced period, mm. which over time uh, makes sense from an affordability perspective. Leasing on the other hand? Leasing is if you, in that market of which 70 to 80% of people are, where you get to three years roundabout and you're getting tired of the vehicle you're driving, you're looking at the new models and you're wanting to trade in and get into the latest model, then leasing is the option for you. What kind of vehicles would uh, leasing be most suited to? Because everybody knows South Africans like to compete with the Joneses. <laughs> uh, any vehicle, any vehicle, but it's the application of the vehicle that is important to you. So if you are gonna trade in, if you do want to change, if you are keeping up with the Joneses, mm. rather lease a vehicle. Because you're buying it and, and trying to settle it halfway through your contract, you don't necessarily have the value in the vehicle versus what's outstanding on your, on your finance debt to cover it, so leasing makes sense that way. So from a cost perspective, uh, what kind of amounts are we talking about? Let's say, give us two examples, a vehicle in the smaller or lower LSM segment or lower affordability segment versus your German sedans. Uh, a typical example between the two, how much would you be paying versus uh, buying these vehicles? Yeah, so, so take uh, an example of the German sedan. Um, you could probably get an all-in package over three years for between eight and 10,000 Rand, depending on the model and, and that sort of thing. And all in Inclusive means it includes insurance, the full maintenance on the vehicle for the period. Um, there's a tracking unit in it. Then if you if you go install and sell, and depending what balloon you put in, and we, we must get into balloon versus residual value, mm. but depending what, depending what balloon payment you put onto that determines your, your payment as well. So it will be similar overall in terms of a package, but where we have the ability to make it cheaper and less risky for consumers is that we have group buying power around the insurance, around the maintenance and service plans, and then obviously the finance options. On the insurance, we know that younger males often get penalized a lot more versus their female counterparts in the older segment. Uh, does that still, you know, does it p play an implication on, on the insurance policy no, of the vehicle? Not, not for us. If, if you finance individually or you get your insurance individually, it depends on your individual circumstances. We yeah. have, we've, we insure a book of vehicles and a book of customers. So it's a, it's a, a group insurance, if you can call it that and we, we charge accordingly. There's, whether you're male or female, doesn't affect the rate that we charge on insurance. Looking at, uh, obviously, the residual and the balloon payment that you had alluded to when it comes to purchasing vehicles, a lot of consumers get caught in that trap. Yeah. Yep. Consumers put balloon payments on simply for affordability because it reduces your monthly installment. Mm. But it's a balloon payment, meaning a large payment, 30, 40, 50%, depending on where you are, at the end of the contract. So once the contract comes to the term, you're responsible as a consumer for that balloon payment. If it's 30% of 200,000 Rand, 60,000 Rand, you've got to find, you've either got to sell the vehicle to pay it, or you must extend the finance period, or pay cash for it. An extension of the finance period obviously increases costs from an interest rate perspective. Yeah, yeah. Inter exactly, interest rate perspective. And it's also difficult then because you, you've got the same car. If you finance that for a further period, you're still driving that same car. So installment sales are now on average six years, with a 30% balloon payment at the end of it, you're driving that car for seven, maybe eight years, depending on your situation. And if you're one of those guys wanting to trade in every three, three and a half, four years, mm. it's going to be expensive for you. And residual, how does it differ on that front? Residual value, the company that finances it takes the risk. So balloon payment is consumer risk, residual value is the leasing company's risk. So we would take the risk on that residual value at the end of contract. So you hand the vehicle back and it's our responsibility then to recover that residual value. 
So let's say someone watching tonight is actually considering wanting to lease a vehicle. Uh, obviously, affordability will be something top of mind. But what happens after that three-year lease uh, actually lapses? So you have an option. You can take ownership. You can offer to buy it from us. Or you hand it back. We find a buyer for it. We trade it out and you get into the next lease mm -hmm. because the new model is waiting for you. Or you can settle it. So y you can pay the the residual value, or you can extend it with us as well. If you want to continue leasing that vehicle for a further period, it's up to you. You've got those three options. Buy it, um, keep on leasing, or just hand it back to us and get into the new vehicle. And with these vehicles, are they always brand new models? or uh Not always, majority of the time, but we do um, look at used vehicles because used vehicles are quite, quite good business. Their biggest depreciation period is the first 12 months. Mm. So they've lost the most value 12 months after they've, they've left the dealer floor. So the, the value of the asset is quite stable after a year old. So we're happy to look at used vehicles and it is a growing option now, particularly with the prices of, of new vehicles where they're going and what value, there's some value in used vehicles. What about the usage of the vehicle or maybe I need to allude to kilometers. Yeah. Uh, does that have an implication on the lease period? Uh, yes. Basically so the higher the mileage, the more cost you might pay? Yeah, so we have a standard 25,000 kilometers per annum, which you'll find is more than the average driver drives. I think the average is about 22,000. So we set it at 25,000. But if you are and you do know that you're going to drive a bit more than that, we'll build that into the process. Maybe if you can also tell us about some of your typical clients. Who would leasing actually suit out there, given it's the fact that a lot of South Africans are under financial pressure? So, so leasing would suit someone like you, someone <laughs> like me. I assume you're going into every three years and changing your car, that sort of thing. You're getting there. But it's, it's the lifestyle consumers, I think, is, is how I like to put it. Those guys who really do... Um, don't and understand that ownership of vehicle doesn't really happen. You never really own your vehicle, mm -hmm. even though you're financing it. You never really own. Explain it. that concept because a lot of South Africans think that that, yeah. way, that way that if they purchase a vehicle and yeah. they finally pay off that last instalment, that the vehicle is all theirs. Once you pay the last instalment, including that balloon payment, then the bank will transfer ownership to you. Agreed. But they never ever get to the end of contract because they're mm -hmm. always settling early to trade in. And um, not ever ever. It's sort of seventy to eighty percent, as I mentioned earlier never get to that end of the contracts and never really take ownership in any event. So they trade in early and they take the risk of depreciation and shortfall value at the time. And that's where, for those sort of consumers, leasing makes sense because the risk is transferred to the leasing company and you have options. So you have the same options as you have in financing and installment sale, mm -hmm. but the risk is passed to, to the leasing company. Mm. To go back to the ownership issue uh, mm. from an asset-based perspective, obviously if you're leasing a vehicle all along, uh, does that have any impl implications on your credit history or you know, asset ownership? Uh, maybe if you want to purchase a home, can you account for that vehicle yes. as one of the assets that you actually own? Well, you, it's certainly, if you lease a vehicle and you pay it well and your payment profile is good, it improves your overall credit record. So that does improve the ability to get home loan finance and, and any other types of finance. But what? the asset, you, you can record it as an asset because you have the option to own. It, so if you put a personal balance sheet, you put, a, put the vehicle into your balance sheet. Despite the lease agreement being yeah. in place. Because it, the same thing, you've got the option to own. You know, if you want to own it, you pay us what's outstanding and you, and you move on. It's exactly the same in that respect as installment sale. What about terms and conditions, like especially penalties involved? Maybe uh, you realize that you're in a three-year agreement and you want to change it a year and a half in. Uh, what are the nitty-gritties and the legalities in so, terms there? So we allow free upgrades, as we call it, after 18 months. So if you're in the vehicle and it's 18 months down the line and you now want to trade out of it, um, we allow you to do that uh, at, at the 18-month, or any time after 18 months, we allow you to, to trade in. We'll at take the vehicle back. There's a cost, but it's a small administration cost. There's no other major cost. So there's no settlement penalties or anything like that. And after three years? What, hand it back. Hand it back or purchase it. Back. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, after three years, I mean, and again, we have consumers now who decide they want to keep it. So they pay the outstanding residual value and they, they take ownership and they drive it for a further period. But a majority of them want to hand it back and get into the new model. Well, you said quite a bit, uh, and hopefully uh, it's time now for us to get the uh, key takeaway points from this conversation in our Notes to Self segment. Uh, Keith, for someone who might be listening uh, this evening and is considering leasing a vehicle, the top five issues that they need to consider before en entering into a contract? So what, is, what do you want to do with that vehicle? Are you going to drive it for a long period of time, or are you one of those people that you know after three years you get itchy feet and you want to trade in? If it is the case, leasing is the option for you. 
Secondly, the insurance maintenance service. Generally, you have to shop around for all those sort of things separately and buy them separately. Um, with us, it all comes in one package, so you pay one amount that never escalates over time. So that one amount is set for the period of your finance. It's on a fixed interest rate, so again, if any interest fluctuation fluctuations happen, it will be it will be fixed, so you won't have to pay more if interest rates go up. On that interest rate, does it also link to your profile? Yes, yes. So the better risk you are, the better interest rate. So very similar to how the how all the banks operate mm -hmm. on on lending. Um, and then I think the 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 key one for me is the risk of depreciation of that asset because cars depreciate, mm. houses appreciate. So rather lease a depreciating asset and don't take the risk of that depreciation value at the time when you want to trade it in. So what you owe on your finance versus what the vehicle's worth after three years, you'll find that quite often you owe more than the vehicle's worth. So you have to find a way to pay money into the deal or the dealer tries to help you get out of it and you pay a bit more and over time it, it costs you. So rather at that period have the option to either just hand it back or buy it or trade it in. And leasing gives you that option. Regardless of the type of vehicle that you're looking Regardless. for. Regardless. Keith, thank you so much for your time today. I would ask you a trick question if you've ever owned your vehicle, <laughs> but we'll save that for another day. <laughs> well, that's it for Personal Finance this evening. Thanks once more to uh, Keith Watson. He's a Managing Director of Arriva. Remember that we'd love to hear from you. You can tweet any of your comments to at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Finance410 or to myself at Gukumfupi on Twitter. Till next time, it's goodbye for now.